Hi, ROM 752 is out, and as usual, there is a set of cool features that were implemented. But I'm going to focus in this movie on the theme of this release, improving ROM support for DevOps. Specifically, I'm going to showcase ROM's integration with uDeploy. Uh, for the rest of the new and noteworthy, check out the download page on jazz.net. The scenario that I'm about to show here, there is an application that is delivered by the development build, uh, and the apps contain three packages, the bits, the docs, and the installation scripts. The RAM UI has added a DevOps perspective that filters packages and components. A package is an asset whose type is designated as a binary doc or an install package, and a component is a special type that was added with the DevOps library and aggregates, or more precisely contains, a set of packages kind of a single unit to move packages or assets across. If the build published an application that is categorized as an integration build, RAM lifecycle will move it to under development state and this will drive a uDeploy to run a set of Selenium functional tests. If the tests have passed, the results will be published to RAM and the help will be categorized as Selenium test passed. This category will move the app to the RAM ready for verification stage will make it ready for you deploy to drive a security web scan. The scan will use a scan template that was approved by the security team. The uDeploy process will pick up the related scan template from the app component. The scan, which may have false positives, will have to be reviewed by the security team before the app is moved to the certified state. So let's go under the hood and check how it is done. Um, I have here a simple shell script build uh, with a few environment variables set. Uh, this build calls this simple shell script, the build.shell, uh, that is using the new RAM command line interfaces. The config command persists the configuration file in your home directory with a user ID, server URL, community and such, so that it could be used by the CLIs later on. The publish command here will allow you to publish multiple assets from the local file system based on a package JSON descriptor. The set command allow you to update the asset, in this case we're setting up the relationship to the scan template as well as the category as designating the application as an integration build. So let me kick start the build here which will publish the app to RAM as an integration build. And in that point uDeploy is configured with a RAM source config. The RAM source config will be uh, enabled when you place the RAM library on the uDeploy extension directory. With this extension, you could point uDeploy to a RAM asset by asset ID, version, state, or a query for a more specific search criteria. I've already run this build a few times, so you could see a few versions that are already brought into uDeploy. Notice also that the integration with RAM will reflect the asset's RAM state as a status for that component version. This status is synchronized each time uDeploy scans for new versions. The status is key as it reflects a gate that could be used for a security scan. The deployment process is quite vanilla, uh, bring down the component and such, but something to uh, look in here is that we are setting the GUID and version of this asset in the environment property container. These properties are going to be used later on as we use RAM tasks to publish results and link them back to this specific asset version. We have here another process to deploy and run an app scan. Uh, which called the previous process to just deploy, but we also um, use RAM task here to download the related scan template, the template we need to uh, scan against, uh, and then publish the report back to RAM uh, with a link to the tested application. To get this RAM task in uDeploy, you will have to download the RAM plugin for the RAM extension page. Uh, looking back at our build, uh, I could see that the new build has been published to RAM and uDeploy just picked it up. Uh, and it's ready for an app scan test, so let's go I uh, kick the tires. But before we kick start the Selenium test, let's check out the Selenium process. The net net here is that uh, the RAM tasks used in this process uh, will categorize the asset to denote success or failures of the tests, which will drive the asset lifecycle. Okay, let me start the Selenium deployment and functional testing to take place with the latest versions.
and as this process run it would publish the results and categorize uh, the asset without a pass or fail. Okay, the test is completed. Uh, let's look in RAM and um, I could see that the asset is marked as uh, test success. And uh, if you scroll down, we could see that the results are linked in. That's great. Uh, given that we tag it as test success, uh, the life cycle of RAM moved the asset to the ready for verification state. And that will be reflected in new deploy, which would make it suitable for the next stage in the pipeline for an app scan. Back in UDeploy, uh, we can see that the status is reflected back here as well. And uh, we could use this status as a gate, or in this case, I'll just uh, invoke AppScan deployment uh, using this status. The app scan test uh, will generate a report. Uh, this report will be published from the process, uh, you deploy process to run for a security audit. And that report will be linked to the template it was based on as well as the application version it uh, tested. So uh, this is 752, check it out.